Welcome to season number two here in the Montreal Expos franchise. The Expos barely, barely hit 60 wins last year, had over 100 losses, but now we are here for our second season of this rebuild, and we have a different looking team this season. Starting off, John Means is now our ace. We signed him to a three-year, $26 million deal. A couple of other returners, including Matthew Boyd, Herman Marquez, and Xavier Curry return to the rotation, but Alexander Santiago is a rookie who makes the opening day roster. Another rookie last year that was one of our best pitchers in our minor league organization was Jamal Watson. But in the spring, he struggled. When we moved up for moved him up for September call-ups, he also struggled. So he will come out of the bullpen at least to start his career, and we'll see how it goes from there. And then also we picked up Dwayne Underwood in the Rule 5 draft. And a lot of our relief pitchers do return, including Buck Farmer, who got a two-year contract extension. He will be slotted into that closer role. So I will probably change his position over to closer for this season. Our opening day lineup looks like this. Dyrone Blanco in center field, no surprise there. Tim Anderson moves over from shortstop to third base this year. He hits second. Christian Walker, who signed a big four-year, $60 million deal with the Expos. He will hit third in the lineup. He made his first all-star team last year, and he's coming off of the best statistical year of his career, hitting 301 with a 926 OPS and a career high in stolen bases. Our second overall prospect in our organization is Augustus Macklin, and he makes his debut today here on the opening day roster. Now, he is one of the top first base prospects in all of baseball right now. I believe that is a third, a number three ranking for him at first base, but he will also play some third base this year to get used to a new position. Travis Jankowski was signed in the offseason, and we'll see how he hits because this could be a potential lineup as well with Jankowski hitting at that second spot also. But we'll see how the first couple of weeks or through the first month of the season go. But Colton Wong will be the second baseman, Addison Barger will be the shortstop, and Akil Badu will be in left field. Coming off of our bench, there are really no surprises except the fact that Riley Adams makes the opening day roster and so does Cal Mitchell, who we will highlight in a little bit because versus lefties, he's hitting down in that seven spot. But I'm really, really excited for the power we are adding to the lineup, including Augustus Macklin, Christian Walker, and then Higgy is coming off of a pretty good 20 home run season, but I think he's gonna need some help that will also boost his confidence as well at that four or five spot in the lineup. But Cal Mitchell was a guy that very that really, really impressed me in the spring. And honestly, last year, we made a trade for him about midway through the season, a little before that. He was only 60 overall. He's only 61, but he's got a really good bat. So he will hit seventh versus lefties as a left-handed hitter. Well, the opening day snubs is led by Javier Assad, who I thought was literally going to be the ace going into this series and he has disappointed so i'm very very you know disappointed with him but i do want to see some development from him at the triple a level bill hedger was our first round pick he will start a, start out at triple a after a slow start in the spring jose hernandez was a guy that was in our bullpen last year he gets moved down to triple a due to jamal watson being moved up and that's two lefties so i had to choose one and watson seemed like the better option and then our number one prospect is Gary Shoemaker. He will start at the AAA level to begin this season. We'll see how that goes. And then Jeter Downs is also down at AAA to develop his skills a little more. So opening day will be versus the New York Mets. And this is a team that finished fourth in the, in the division last year. Obviously, the Phillies and the Braves made the playoffs. And we were down there at the bottom too. So we will see if... Both teams can bounce back this year and have a good season. Dyron Blanco leads us off here on the road at City Field. And first pitch is underway. And here is a outside slurve. And that one will be a fly ball to center field to get this 2025 season underway. 
That brings up Tim Anderson to the plate now, and he swings and misses at some high heat, 95 mile an hour. And it's two up, two down, as that brings up the new acquisition. Four years, $60 million tied to his name, Christian Walker, and he hits one down the right field line. And that's how good of a hitter Walker is. He was late on that swing and still found a way to power it to right field for his first hit as an Expo. Coming off of a year where he was over 950 OPS and a 300 average, he's going to play a big part this year. It brings up the rookie Augustus Macklin, and he gets fooled on that fork. That fork ball is very, very deceiving. It's a tough pitch to hit, so we'll see if our hitters can adjust to it. So John Means gets his first start as an expo. Look at that location on that curve. It's a strike three. As we face a very potent lineup, here is Brandon Nemo at the plate. He swings and misses at what as well. That's the same location as the last strikeout to Starling Marte. And Jeff McNeil comes up with two outs. And he will fly out to right field. And it's a 1-2-3 inning here for John Means. Out to the bottom of the second inning. Here is Francisco Lindor. He's swinging and missing also. Means is off to a great start so far with a runner on first base. Now there's one out. Bringing up Brent Rooker, who hits one down the left field line. He signed a free agent deal with the Mets, and that one will be a single. And now they have a runner in scoring position. As John Means is in his first bit of trouble here in his Expos career. Bringing up Tyrone Taylor to the plate. Ground ball to third. On to second. On to first. It's a double play. So that's the thing about John Means. He's going to be very, very precise with his pitches he's very intentional with his location and he is tough to get a good bat on but that brings up Brandon Nemo here in the bottom of the third inning and that's a ground ball to second and it will get us out of the third with only two hits given up through the first three innings that brings up Augustus Macklin now for his second AB and he swings and misses at that fourth ball which is like I said very very deceiving that one was low in the dirt and it's a swing and a miss. Kyle Higashioka to the plate now. He led our team in home runs, and another fork ball fools us. And it's a swinging strike three. Bottom four now. Here's Pete Alonzo. Oh, he gets a hold of this one. Deep to right center field. It is gone. Pete Alonzo opens up the 2025 season with a home run here to give the Mets the one nothing lead in the fourth inning. But Means does settle down here and gets us out of this fourth inning with the chop at the first base. And it's one nothing here as we move on to the second half of this game. On to the top of the fifth. Here is Addison Barger to the plate now. And he gets fooled on that fork ball as well. And this, this Expos lineup cannot hit Senga on the mound. So now here we go, bottom fifth. John Means getting... Francisco Alvarez to whiff at that one. It seems like this one's going to be a pitcher's duel. Starley Marte back to the plate. One and two pitch, and he gets him to swing and miss. And John Means looks very mean on that mound as we move on to the top of the sixth. Can we finally get some base runners aboard? Here is Akil Badu who leads off with a walk. And now the top of the order does roll over as that brings up Dyrone Blanco inside slurve, and it's a ball four. So two straight walks to our two best base runners, by the way, as that brings up Christian Walker, and he will walk. So now it's bases loaded, one out, and now that brings up Augustus Macklin, but the manager for the Mets has seen enough. He will pull Sanga and bring in some guy from the bullpen, Ryan Baruki, who last year did not do great. He wasn't awful, but obviously he's somebody that is hittable. So that brings up the rookie, Augustus Macklin. 0 for 2 today. Bases loaded. He hits this one well to left field. That's fair. It scores 1. It scores 2. And Augustus Macklin will make it on to second base. Christian Walker to third. And it's a 2-1 ball game off of the bat of the rookie, Augustus Macklin. There's an incentive now to move players up and try to win rookie of the year with those additional draft picks you get. And I think that Macklin has a great chance to win Rookie of the Year here, and it's 2-1. to one. 
Here is Higgy to the plate. He hits one well to the left field line. Same spot. It will score two. Higgy rounds first, heads to second, and he will be in the second with a bases clearing double. A big time sixth inning here for the Expos. And we have opened up the score here. And now we find ourselves ahead by three. That brings up Colton Wong, who hits one well to right field. And that one will be a fly out to right. And we do get four in the sixth. And we have a comfortable lead. As that brings up Francisco Lindor to the plate now. Here he hits one well to right field with a man on first base. And that one gets over the head of Jankowski. He plays it off the wall. It's a long throw to the cutoff man. Wong with the throw hole will not be in time. And Jeff McNeil is safe. And now it is a four to two ball game. John Means, 107 pitches through a, almost six innings of work, but we decide to go to our bullpen and bring in Elvis Piguero. He was our best relief pitcher last year. Let's see if he can get us out of this jam. That brings up Rooker to the plate now. Fly ball to right field, and that will end the sixth inning. But both teams are on the board in the sixth. That brings up Barger to the plate now in the top of the seventh, and he will single up the middle. Barger's going to have to have a good year at short to really prove he is the shortstop of the now and the future. He is still in his mid-20s. He's 25 years old, so he's still got time to develop. But now with two outs, Tim Anderson at the plate now. Dyron Blanco is at first, and this is a deep fly ball to center field. This one just keeps carrying it to home run. Tim Anderson with the two-run shot. And he will give us the 6-2 to two lead. That looked like just a fly ball to center, but it just kept carrying. And Tim Anderson goes deep for the first time in 2025. So now we move on to the bottom of the seventh inning. Here is a fly ball to right center. And Dyron Blanco with that 99 speed cannot make it there. And it will be a ground rule double here for Tyrone Taylor. That brings up Francisco Alvarez to the plate. He hits one well to the right side, and this one actually skips through the infield and gets all the way to the wall in right center, and it's now a 6-3 to three ball game. So the Mets are staying in this one. As now that brings up Brett Beatty. We do keep Elvis Bergero in, and Beatty hits one deep to right field off of the wall, and Jankowski plays it off the wall nicely, throwing the second. The throw is in time, but the tag and the slide is around the tag, and Beatty has a double, and it's 6-4. to four. We go to our bullpen. Elvis Bergero is getting hit pretty hard. So we bring in the rookie Jamal Watson out of the pen, He's going to start the year in the bullpen, but we'll see how he does going forward. He facing Star faces Starling Marte with no outs, man on second base, and that one will be a ground out right back up the middle to Watson. Brandon Nimmo to the plate now. He hits one up the middle. Good play by Barger. Throw in on the run, and he will get the out at first. And now there's two outs with Jeff McNeil. Once led the MLB in batting average, and that one will be ball four. So now that brings up a man you don't want to face in this situation and Pete Alonso. He's already went deep once, 31 home runs a year ago, and Watson probably his toughest at bat here of this inning. And Pete Alonso hits one well to right field, and it's now 6-5. to five. We got ourselves a ball game. It was a pitcher's duel early on, but now both offenses have awoken is that brings up Francisco Lindor. He's not done. That's a line drive up the middle, and this ball game is tied. Six apiece here on the road on opening day for the Mets and the Expos. And this Mets lineup looks a whole lot better than a year ago. Miguel Castro comes out of the bullpen. He was signed in free agency to a two-year deal. And now he gets his first action here with the Expos. That one's a fly ball to center field, and it will end the seventh, but not before the Mets tie this ball game up. Top eight now. Here's Augustus Macklin, one for three on the day. He will walk to start out this eighth inning. As that brings up Jankowski now with one out. He gets one over the middle of the plate, and that's a good single up the middle. And now we have a runner in scoring position. Macklin doesn't have a great speed, so a base hit might not score him. That brings up Colton Wong. He's a little late on that one and flies this one into the infield. It's an infield fly. 
And now, two outs, men on first and second here in the eighth inning. And Addison Barger, he hit that one up the middle earlier. One for three. Three-two count. Runners are on the move. He hits this one well to center field. Deep back at the track. And it's run down at the warning track. And now we move on to the bottom of the ninth inning. Pete Alonzo up at the plate. Runner on first with a chance to win this game with one swing of the bat. A one-two pitch is low. It's a sinker and gets him two whiff. And now two outs. Francisco Lindor, Castro, one strike away from going into extras, and he gets them to swing and miss. So opening day is into extras here in City Field, and now Christian Walker comes to the plate. He has a hit today. Remember in the first inning, that one's a deep fly ball to center field that at least moves the runner over to third, but a great throw to third, by the way. Barely Tim Anderson gets into third base, but now we have a man on third. Anything in play should score that runner. But here is Macklin, and I said anything, and that's what Macklin does. A tapper back to the pitcher, and it's a ground out. So now we have two outs. That brings up Higgy to the plate. One for three today. He gets one inside. It's a chopper to the left side, and it gets through the infield, and it's now 7-6. to six. Higgy with some clutch hitting right there, and he gives us the lead here in extra innings. I love the extra inning rules, by the way. It just makes uh, – you know, extra innings a lot more exciting because that brings up Jankowski to the plate. And we're not done here in the 10th inning. That's going to drop into center field. And he has a multi-hit game for the new Expo. Maybe he's an underrated signing going into this season. Colton Wong to the plate now. He hits one to the left side. And that's fielded by Lindor. Jankowski almost beat that one out. But they do get the force out at second. So bottom 10, Castro is still on the mound. This one's hit up the middle when it gets past Castro's glove. onto center, Dyron Blanco comes up throwing and not in time. Dyron Blanco doesn't have the greatest arm from center field. He gets to everything, but that somehow gets past the glove of Castro. We bring in Buck Farmer next, and he will get Alvarez to watch that one. And now on to the 11th. Here is Brett Beatty, ground ball up the middle. A good play by Wong, throw on to first and he will get the runner. And now there's one out, man on third base. Anything in play might score this run here and win this game. Here's Marte, it's a suicide squeeze and the Mets will win it. You've gotta be kidding me. On opening day, a suicide squeeze to walk it off. Wow. The New York Mets pull one on us, and we will lose this one in 11 innings, 8-7. to seven. Excitement here on opening day, and the Mets take advantage of that situation and get the big win. We do bounce back in game number two and win this one 9-5. Tim Anderson went 2-for-5 with three RBIs, so we're at least producing runs, something we could not do a year ago. Monasterio got the start as well at short, and he went two for five. So now we move on to game number three, and look who it we're facing. Walker Bueller, who signed with the Mets on a two-year deal, and we will get to face him for years to come. Remember, Walker Bueller was one of the guys we were debating signing. We decided not to just because of the season he had last year and just his history, and we're hitting him actually pretty well today. But he's still on the mound here in the sixth inning. It's now three to four, just a one run game. Matthew Boyd's given up four runs so far. And now the Mets start to go to the bullpen. But Boyd, we're gonna keep him in here. He gives up a double and we have to change right away. So we go to Elvis Piguero again. He gets us out of that inning on to the eighth. We end up tying it up in the seventh inning. And once again, we go into the ninth inning. It's a tie ball game, but then the Mets walk it off with a two-run home run by Francisco Alvarez, and they win this series 2-1, to one, and they end up with a 6-4 to four victory in that one. So the opening series is exciting with two walk-offs by the Mets, and we are 1-2 to start this year, but I am very, very excited about what I'm seeing. We are producing runs in every game. We've had at least four runs scored, so that is a good sign going forward. 
So next episode, we will get to see the debut of Alexander Santiago, who was our minor leaguer of the year last year. I decided to wait to start him at this point in time at, during the twin series because I wanted to be have it be dedicated to just him to start an episode. And we're going to do that. But he will be actually our number two in the rotation. So let me know what you guys thought of the opener. And I hope you guys are excited as I am for season two. Hit subscribe. Hit that like button. Stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go. Too easy. I've been there, done it, seen it. Boy, all that like Kenan. Still got crack, they feeling. Flow still hot like Phoenix. Shine so bright, I'm gleaming. This off top, I'm tweaking. Fresh out the rat like me. And I'm still trying to fight my demons. Cause we all gotta act like Tina. That's why I gotta ride with the Nino. Outside, it's a war going on.